Look what came in the mail. I bought this purely for scientific purposes, the Pat McGrath Labs Mini Eyeshadow Palette in Midnight Voyage. I already have a video on this palette. I will link it down below because I have five of the six shades from her Mothership palette. Check that video out, or you can just stay here because we're gonna get into the nitty gritty with this palette. So I purchased this online at Sephora.com. It was $29. Pat McGrath has never come out with a mini eyeshadow in this style. She's come out with smaller palettes but this is the first one where I was like hmm it looks like a tiny little ABH Norvina palette if you know what I'm talking about but I just really wanted to see what size this was so so this is what the packaging is gonna come in no loose gold glitter anymore we've graduated from that thank you Pat and you have the ingredients and whatnot on zip back made in Italy 18 month shelf life oh i'm happy that it's made in italy that's awesome because italy tends to be where she sources her best formulas from if you're wondering so like i said it is 29 dollars. it is limited edition and i think this is a great way to try pat mcgrath quality without breaking the bank all at once because her full size palettes are like almost 130 dollars which <laughs> I know, not a lot of us are willing to spend our money on that. So $29 hurts the wallet a lot less. So on Sephora, they say this is a mini mirrored eyeshadow compact inspired by Pat's most loved shades and textures. So what she means by that is there are five repeat shades in here. Okay, let's open this up. Now, what I was also curious about is I'm going to swatch these side by side with the actual Mothership shades just to see if there's a decrease in quality because, listen, some of these brands are sketchy. I've noticed some sketchy things when they have repeat shades. The only thing that I could think that would make them feel different would be the age of my Mothership palettes, that they are not fresh. So in all rights, if anything, this should be creamier if they're not the exact same formula, but let's go over the size of this. You guys have been sending me pictures, so I'm not surprised at how tiny this is. This is so tiny. I'm a small person, so it looks bigger than what it is on my hand. So let me just show you. Here is a Huda Beauty 9 pan palette, which is already a small palette. Look at this. This is so tiny. Here is a Sigma blush. It's almost smaller than an individual blush. Okay, I mean, you know the Charlotte Tilbury bronzers are ginormous, but still, this is like a tiny little thing. It's crazy to think about that there are six shades in here. I haven't even opened it. It feels a little cheap. It doesn't feel high quality. The ABH Norvina palettes feel a little bit more sturdy. This, I don't know, can you hear this? I look stupid if you can't hear that, but there's a little bit of squeaking. It just doesn't feel well oiled. It's fine, but it looks nicer than it feels. And then on the back here, I like that she gives you all of the shades and all of that. And as you can see, this is in fact altogether 3 grams of product and 0 0.10 ounces. It's just a snap closure, not magnetic or anything. You do have a mirror, which is nice, but plastic thingy just flew by. Oh my gosh, how cute is this? This is so cute. Honestly, this is probably not worth $29, but it is so cute. Mini makeup. I love mini makeup. It excites me. I would love to pay less for less product. So even if it's technically a bad value, as long as it doesn't hurt my wallet because I'm not going through any product anyways, this looks promising. Okay, I'm going to swatch the shades. Three of the six shades are actually in the Mothership Bronze Seduction. Literally, like these three shades right here are the exact placement yeah okay they're the same oh my gosh look how cute compared to the giant size in the mothership palette okay I'm gonna start off by swatching the first three shades one two and if you know me you know I hate this shadow okay they feel okay one The question is, is this a better matte than what is in my bronze seduction palette? Let's find out. I would say they feel about the same by touch. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. okay, let's test this purple. They look the same. Oh my gosh, they are the exact same and they feel the exact same. I'd argue that this feels a little softer. I think maybe my aubergine in bronze seduction is a dud or something. I mean, it still seems patchy, but it's not worse quality, which is good. Okay. Hmm, I just noticed something really, really weird. Let me swatch 
Eleganza first, which is one of my all-time favorite shades from Pat McGrath. Yes, give it to me. Mm, same formula, I can tell you now. From the Divine Rose 2. Yeah, twins. Awesome. They feel the same. They look the same. And then let me do the last new shade, which is this one here, Night Creature, which looks like this. There are no Blitz Astral shades in this little palette, so keep that in mind, but there still is really nice formulas in here. Then I'm getting this from my Subversive palette. Yeah. They the same. So same quality, same everything. Phenomenal. So that myth has been busted. So that leaves us with the new shade right here. And here is what I'm unsure about. So on the swatches online at the Sephora website, it says that the name of the new shade is Bronze Venus. And then here it says that the name is Sunset Bronze. Like literally, look. Number three, Sunset Bronze. If you go into the About the Product on the Sephora website, Sunset Bronze is the name and not Bronze Venus. Mmm, no, okay. It says in the What Else You Need to Know, it says the debut shade, debut metallic is Bronze Venus. And then it says the palette contains Sunset Bronze. And then on both this packaging and this packaging sunset bronze so there's a typo either way so whatever the heck this shade's name is it's a new <laughs> metallic shade and it does not look like it does in the photo so here you go this is what it looks like it looks way more orange and glittery in the photo i thought it matched up with a patrick ta shade it definitely does not this is not a unique shade. It's a warm chocolate shimmer. So this debut shade isn't that special, but it still is gorgeous and it feels really creamy. All in all, I am very happy about this. This is great Pat McGrath quality already. So let's put her on the eyes. Here's a look that I did with this palette. If you want to see another look that you can do with this palette, check out the video that I already did on these shades. I used all of the shades except for the new one, obviously, and it was a gorgeous look as well. But my main thing today was to use this shade. So starting off with an Isom V34, I'm going into the mid-tone brown shade, and I do have the Jacqueline Cosmetics eye primer on, by the way. And I am going to just blend this all over the crease, and I'm also going to Blend that along the lower lash line as well. Just like that. Beautiful blend. With an Isom G27, I'm going into the highlight shade. I'm just going to pop that underneath my brow bone and a little bit in my inner corner. Isn't that shade so pretty? You can get such a pretty look with just this brown and then this gold all over the crease. And here's what I'm shocked by. I'm going into Aubergine. And this shade I always have trouble blending with when I use it from my Bronze Seduction palette. I mean, I'm only using it in small little places on my eyes, so this might be why, but I feel like this blends a little easier. So uh, that's a really good sign. And even if it doesn't, it still is no different than the one in my Full Size Bronze Seduction palette, but I think this one might be a little better. I'm gonna have to use it a few more times to fully decide that, but it's not as patchy or hard to blend out, I feel like. Maybe it's in my head. Oh, wait, maybe it's getting a little patchy. Mm. That maybe this is just not a good, not a good purple shade, maybe. Anyways, you can see I did a halo eye, so I'm keeping it on the inner and outer corner. The day that I'm filming this, I'm going to a MGK concert today. This evening, I was planning to take this off and redo my makeup, but this might be good for that concert. We'll see how it looks, because I need to go on a walk too, and my makeup might get ruined out there. Okay. Next up, I'm going with a rougher number two brush and we're going into the new shade, whatever its name is. And I find that when I apply this with the brush, it is really beautiful. I feel like it doesn't have as opaque of a base as I would like. It's really reflective, but it almost isn't sticking beautifully to the eyelid. It's fine. This is me being extra picky because I know, you know, what Pat McGrath is capable of. It's a really beautiful shade. I'm not saying it's not good quality, but you do have to layer it a couple times if you want a strong base, but you can get a softer base with it as well. And that's a really gorgeous shade, and I love the way that it pairs with the aubergine color. I think it looks really nighttime smoky and grungy, so I do like this shade. It's it's a bit odd to me that this is the one new shade and nothing about it really screams unique to me. It is pretty. And that's it for the look. 
Let me put on liner, lashes, blush, and all of that, and I will be back to give you my final thoughts. Here's the final look with lashes. I just did a simple eyeliner, and then I'm wearing Milani Flora eyelashes. Everything that I'm wearing on the lips, cheeks, face will be in the description box, but I wanted to share at least a dupe with you for the new shade from the Pat McGrath palette, and it was so easy to find. Literally, the first palette I pulled out. <laughs> like, they're almost similar, so I'm gonna get some of the new shade from the Pat McGrath palette. It's going to be the Top Swatch. If you're a Pat McGrath fan, there's a high chance you're also a Natasha Denona fan. So from the bronze palette, I thought gloaming right here is kind of close. So, right? Pretty close. It's a little bit more bronze, whereas the Pat McGrath has a little bit more pink. But they're going to give you the same effect, and they both have a similar pink to orange shift as well. So just thought I'd share that in case you are a Pat McGrath collector, so you're not buying this since there's only one new shade. If you have the bronze palette, Gloaming is a similar shade. So to close this out, I'm very, very happy with this palette. Yes, it is very, very tiny, so it probably value-wise isn't the best, but I feel like this is a great way just to try the Pat McGrath formula without breaking the bank at once. Or if you're like me, I don't travel with my Mothership palettes. They're too expensive and they're too heavy. This is a great way to get very pretty shades from Pat McGrath. These are all shades that I would wear regularly in one palette. It even contains one of my all-time favorite shades from Pat McGrath and tones that coordinate really well with each other. So just keep in mind you aren't getting the luxury experience with this. And yes, she's a little pea-sized, but I think I like that about this. <laughs> so overall, I'm just happy that the quality in here is consistent and it's just so cute. The looks I've created so far are really beautiful as well. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let me know if you're planning on picking this little cutie up. I hope she comes out with more. I heard that there is a second one that will also be coming out like this, so I'm excited to see if there's any repeats and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Thank you so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.